Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 13th June 2020. I am Sagar I used to work in information technology. I have retired now. I am swing trading stocks using the Q systems and techniques that I develop. You may contact me using my email id tradingprofitably at gmail.com. This is my YouTube channel where I share these and similar trading related videos. My Twitter handle Sagarnandi and my traders forum sagarnandi.com where I regularly share live market and stock analysis. All these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. I am not an investment advisor. It is not a trade recommendation. Trading involves risk. You and only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades. As usual, I will apply the Q360 degrees analysis techniques to look at the two commodities, oil and coal, and then look at the market sectors, industries and stocks. For technical analysis, charting and scanning, I will use Q Elite running on TradeStation and Q Global and Finder running on Metastock. For stock fundamental and peer analysis, I will use Q Vital, sector industry rotation analysis using Q Edge and market and index level analysis using Q-Index. All of these systems can be run in 100% real-time mode. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. I am beginning with the oil ETF USO. I am analyzing it using Q Global on Metastock using the weekly, daily at a glance template. One week ago, in the previous market roundup, when price closed at this point, I mentioned that because the price was above upper boundary level, it was too extended for me to take any long trade. That was useful. This week on Monday, USO displayed the headwind reversal signal and from there price declined. In the weekly chart, the backdrop candle color is still remaining cyan, bullish. In the daily, price is just below the memory trendline resistance. Next week, if price can go up, break above the memory trend line resistance and gives a cyan color candle that may signal a possible trend following go with flow long trade setup. Gold ETM GLD Again I am using Q Global on Meta stock and using the weekly daily at a glance template. This week gold price recovered However, the backdrop candle color is still remaining bearish magenta. In the daily chart, price is continuing to remain inside a range. On Thursday and Friday, price couldn't go up. It is now inside the range, near the middle of the range. That is not a point where Q traders would like to take a new trade in gold. After the commodities analysis, I am continuing with the market level analysis using the four market ETFs. For that, I am using Q Elite running on TradeStation. This is the Q Elite sonar program using TradeStation's radar. I am looking at the four market ETFs using daily interval and also using weekly interval. As I will show you, this week was full of reversals. 
in different ways. In which ways? This week's worst performer among the four market ETFs was IWM. It went down by 7.9%. However, on Friday, IWM was the best performer. That is a kind of reversal. Worst performer over the weekly period became the best performer on Friday. At the other end of the spectrum, though it also went down, QQQ was the best performer over the weekly period. However, on Friday, it became the worst performer. That was also a reversal in price performance. The best performer over weekly period became the worst performer on Friday. There were other reversal signals as well. You may look at the relative performance indicator in Q system that is showing that QQQ was relatively the strongest over the weekly period, but on Friday it was weaker. On the other hand, IWM and DIA, they were relatively weak over the weekly period and on Friday they became relatively strong. That is also showing reversal in terms of Q relative performance indicator. Not only that, there are many other kinds of reversals that you can observe from this Q sonar. Using the Q reversal indicator, you can see that IWM has a weekly reversal candle. In Q systems, we have multiple trade setups. GWF or go with flow is the trend following trade setup. And then there are multiple reversal trade setups. Box setup is one of them. Q sonar is showing that IWM is having a possible box reversal short trade setup on the weekly interval. Then there is the bounce indicator that is showing that dia is bouncing from trend line support. It touched the trend line support on the daily interval and then it bounced up from there. Not only that, DIA touched a memory support as well. The touch and bounce queue indicators are showing possible bullish reversal in DIA both on the weekly as well as the daily interval. Q sonar showed there are many kinds of reversals on the market ETFs. Let's look at the ETF charts using Q Elite on Trade Station to see if any of them is presenting any trade setup. Starting with the S&P 500 ETF, SPY. In the weekly chart, the backdrop color is neutral, yellow, and the shape is also bearish to indecisive. In the daily, price is still in an uptrend. However, Friday's traffic light candle color is bearish. There is no swing trade setup in SPY right now. NASDAQ ETF QQQ, it created a false upside breakout at the weekly watermark resistance. This week's backdrop candle color is neutral and the shape is indecisive. In the daily, it tried to go above the watermark resistance and created a false upside breakout. Next week, if price 
tries to go above the same watermark resistance but reverses that may give a low risk shorting opportunity Russell 2000 ETF IWM Q Shonar showed a weekly reversal in IWM that reversal is shown here using the band indicator there is a bear release signal as well this week price reversed the weekly backdrop candle color is neutral and the shape is bearish the body is solid that is bearish however it has a lower tail that is somewhat indecisive in the daily it is still in an uptrend like the other market ETFs Friday's traffic light candle color is bearish however the shape is indecisive even if price goes down next week you may not look for a short trade because there is a memory trend line support nearby instead if price comes to the memory trend line support and goes up from there then you may look for a buying opportunity using the bounce trade setup you may look for such bounce trade either in IWM or in any of the small cap stocks that leaves us with Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA Q Sonar showed that it is touching and bouncing up both from the weekly trend line support memory support and daily trend line support you can see that bounce clearly from here from the candlesticks on Thursday and Friday price tried to go below the daily memory support as well as the weekly memory support but failed and price closed above both the memory support lines on Thursday I conducted a YouTube live session the recording is on my YouTube channel trading profitably you would know from that session that I was aware about the dia memory support line both in the weekly and daily chart and talked about them in that session and based on those supports I had decided to book profit in multiple short trades that I had that was a good idea because DIA bounced up from the memory support the other market ETFs also recovered and if I didn't book profit in the put options that I had taken the profit would erode substantially are you a futures trader or do you observe the market futures to get a sense of how the market is moving or how it is about to move if you looked at the YM futures the Dow futures the Dow futures YM also bounced from the weekly and daily memory support levels on Thursday Dow fell sharply and then on Friday it recovered somewhat not a lot but it recovered somewhat that recovery was enough to take some very profitable futures long trades using the intraday Q fine tune chart let me explain how this is the same Dow futures I am using Q global daily and intraday fine-tune chart to analyze it as I already showed on the daily it came to the memory support and went up from there on Thursday it closed right at the memory support level looking at that on Friday you could be ready using the fine-tune chart I have drawn a line on the fine-tune 
10 minute chart showing the location of the memory support line on Friday. That is this price level. Just above 25,000 level. On Friday, price open at this level, the blue pivot level, and then it came down. Because you were aware of the bounce possibility, you were not going to take any short trend. Instead, when price came to the daily memory support level and bounced up from there, and it displayed a bull release signal, the drop prior that was associated with high activity and the up move, the reversal was also associated with very high activity. Using the concept of bounce from major pivot level, this magenta pivot level, and also from the daily memory trend line support, you could buy the futures right at this point. For the day, you could put stop just below the daily memory trend line support and once price went up and covered more than the risk distance, you could book the profit. That was a very profitable futures long trade using bounce up from daily memory support. In fact, Tau gave another opportunity to take a bounce long trade. Later, it dropped again sharply, went below the daily trend line support and then recovered. Again, it displayed a bull release signal. However, that candle had an upper tail. Therefore, you would not buy the futures at that point. You would wait for the next candle and you would buy YM at that point, putting stop below day slow. The stop was never approached. Instead, price went up. At the high, it covered more than the risk distance. And again, you could book a very nice profit in the YM futures long trade. If you watched my previous market roundup videos or attended YouTube live sessions, then you would know that this is a very common technique for Q traders and a very effective, highly profitable technique where you know beforehand the location of the daily memory trend line support. You wait for price to come there and then you switch to the intraday fine tune chart either using 5 minute interval or using 10 minute interval. And as price hits the support and reverses from there, you take a very low risk trade and book profit once the risk distance is covered. How to identify such trade possibilities? If you look at the Q scans, and here I am using Q Global on Metastock. There is a scan for looking for stocks that are hitting memory trend line support. You may run it on a list of stocks of your interest and identify stocks that are at memory support. You might scan for those using the daily interval and then you may switch to the fine tune chart 5 minute or 10 minute interval to see if price can come back to those supports and reverse on the intraday real-time chart. In that way, you can be prepared and take those trades right at the support level with a very low risk. That was my market level analysis. Now, let me go ahead with the sector level analysis. The sector level is just below the market level, followed by the industry level and then the stock level. When I trade stocks, I carry out all these levels analysis and try to align forces from all these levels with my trades. Therefore, if I am going to buy a stock, I prefer to buy them 
in a bullish market or strengthening market in a strong sector industry in a stock with strong fundamentals and also in a stock that is giving a technical buy trade setup using the Q unambiguous checklist. We saw that the market is indecisive. All the weekly candles are indecisive or bearish and on Friday price recovered somewhat but not a lot. There were a lot of reversals at the market level and you will see the reversals are obvious from the Q sector analysis as well. This is an analysis of the sector performance over three periods, five day period, 10 day period and one month period. That is one week, two weeks and one month period. However, this is a snapshot from one week ago. At that time, the market was very bullish. Monthly period, all the 11 sectors were up. Two week period, all the 11 sectors were up and one week period also, all the sectors were up. What happened after that? This is the same sector performance across three review periods, one week, two week and one month. And this snapshot is from the current week. The monthly period is still bullish. All the 11 sectors are up. Two week period is also bullish overall. Seven sectors are up and four are down. However, this week is very bearish. All the 11 sectors are down. That is shown by all the red bars coming to the left of the zero line. This is another look at the sector performance comparing this week's percentage change with previous week's percentage change. We saw previous week all the sectors were up, this week all the sectors are down and if you look at the percentage changes, they are not in a perfectly mirror image but more or less like a mirror image. The sectors that went up most one week ago also declined most this week. That is showing a flip-flop move or a reversal at the sector level. That is comparing the weekly performance between previous week and this week. That is showing reversal and not only that, this is a sector performance analysis comparing the five day performance over one day performance. That is Friday's performance. This is also showing reversal. Over five day, all the sectors are down However, on Friday, all the sectors are up. Not only that, the sectors that were down most over five day period were up most on Friday. That is also showing a kind of reversal or flip flop move at the sector level. If you focus on the sector performance on Friday, one day period, the strongest sectors are energy, real estate and materials and the weakest ones are utilities, consumer staples and healthcare. The weakest sectors are defensive sectors and the strongest sectors are non-defensive sectors. I showed earlier that oil ETF USO may give a breakout and go with flow long trade setup if it can move up next week. And we see energy stocks have already started to move up on Friday. If USO can give a long trade setup next week, then it makes sense to look for buying opportunities in energy stocks next week. This is Q index and I am analyzing Dow Jones Industrial Index DJI using Q index. Q index is used to analyze index for market level or index level analysis. Earlier, we saw that among the market ETFs, DIA is the one that seems to give the easiest buying opportunity as a 
pounds long trade setup it is at both weekly and daily memory support and it closed above those support levels that might tell us to look at the Dow stocks and to see if there is a buying opportunity in any of those stocks let us find that out first let us look at the summary graph of Dow Jones industrial average on Friday Dow was very bullish 87 percent of the stocks were up however in spite of that strong up move on Friday over two day period all the Dow components are down 100 percent of the Dow components are down and over five day 94 percent of the Dow components are down at the outset that is not giving us a lot of confidence to buy Dow stocks because though on Friday they went up over two day period all of them are down however we may not stop there let's look at the actual stocks and these are the Dow stocks using Q vital fundamental scorecard let's sort the stocks using one day performance look at the 10 best performers on Friday and then analyze them using Q global technical charts I have opened all those 10 stocks the 10 best performers inside dia using Q global Q entry daily chart template this is Walt Disney DIS it went up on Friday however Friday's traffic light candle color is still red that is not giving us any buy trade setup let's look at the next stock JP Morgan went up on Friday but the traffic light candle color is still bearish there is no long trade setup American Express AXP same pattern went up on Friday how far traffic light candle color is bearish no long trade setup let me go through the next stocks quickly Cisco red traffic light no long trade setup IBM red traffic light no long trade setup CVX same GS Goldman Sachs same RTX same Dow DOW same BA Boeing this is looking slightly better because here the daily traffic light candle color is yellow not red that is still not giving us a buy trade setup however next week if it goes up gives us a cyan color candle that may give us a trend following go with flow long trade setup you may see that on Friday there was high bullish pressure and bullish pressure U-turn so far we found only Boeing BA that may give a possible long trade setup next week let's continue back to Disney therefore out of all the 10 top Dow performers none of them are giving a long trade setup right now in spite of the bounce up from daily memory support for dia and boeing seems to be the most likely buy candidate for next week if the market goes up or if the stock goes up are you done yet with all the reversal signals that are showing up in different q analysis if not then here is one more this is the summary graph from Q finder Q finder shows the Q signals across thousands of stocks in three different categories the strength signals continuation signals and reversal signals the strength signals are showing that Friday was very bullish the continuation signals are mixed they are not 
providing any useful insight and the reversal signals are showing that they are mostly bullish the reversal signals are much more prominent than the continuation signals showing again that there is reversal at the stock level as well we saw reversal at the market level at the sector level and now we see them at the stock level as well we saw a lot of reversals is this the right market to trade for swing trading purpose we tried to look for buying opportunities from dow components and we didn't find any though dia was the most likely market etf to bounce up another way q traders look for trading opportunities is using q insight that is part of q edge q vital and q index here you may find the best performing and worst performing stocks under various categories best performing growth stocks worst performing growth stocks best performing undervalued stocks worst performing overvalued stocks etc if you are looking to buy stocks you might look at the best performing growth stocks and best performing undervalued stocks using q edge here i can highlight all of these stocks and then click the chart icon to open all of them in q global that is running on meta stock or you could also transfer the symbols to q elite radar to look at them using trade station let me use q global on meta stock i have opened all those 20 stocks the 10 best performing growth stocks and 10 best performing undervalued stocks using q global i'm using the q entry daily chart template that is used to decide if there is a q trade setup i'll go through them quickly this is ivr in vesco the daily traffic light candle color is yellow there is no long trade setup yet if it goes up next week and gives a cyan colored candle that may give us a go with flow long trade setup you may keep an eye for that sgms here the traffic light candle color on friday is red no trade here rcl red candle on friday no long trade setup yet same for mtdr same for car same for play chs same ccl carnival here also the candle color on friday is not red yellow not cyan yet if it can go up next week then like boeing ccl may give a go it for a long trade setup prsp it is bullish on friday the traffic light color is also bullish however too close to the upper boundary level to take a long trade now adobe bullish on friday however too close to the upper boundary level to take a long trade ENVA bearish candle color on Friday no long trade setup AEL same SNBR the traffic light candle color on Friday is yellow if it can go up next week it may give a buy trade setup however it will already be above the upper boundary level Q traders at least Q traders like me tend to avoid buying a stock that is already above the upper boundary level hwm traffic light color on friday is red no long trade setup here med 
traffic light is yellow on Friday, however too close to the upper boundary. Though it is bullish, I may avoid buying the stock now. CRS red candle on Friday, I am not going to buy it now. CHEF also red traffic light, no buy setup. NMIH yellow traffic light on Friday. If it goes up next week, gives us a sand color candle, then NMIH, NMI holding, it may give a go with flow long trade setup. GES, traffic light is red, no long trade setup yet. IVR, we are back to IVR. We went through all the 20 stocks, 10 best performing growth stocks and 10 best performing undervalued stocks and we didn't find any long trade setup as of Friday's close. Some of them may give a long trade setup next week but none of them are signaling a buy setup as of Friday's close. That is showing that you may wait before taking any long trade. When the best performing value stocks, best performing growth stocks don't give a buy trade setup, that may not be the best time to take long positions. Time to make a call on my market outlook and prefer trade direction for swing trading. For the weekly period, all the sectors are down. How far on Friday, all of them are up. The backdrop weekly charts are showing indecision or bearishness at the market level. At the same time, on Friday, on the daily chart, all the market ETFs went up. That is leading me to conclude my market outlook as neutral or indecisive. What about preferred trading direction? On Friday, the market went up. Therefore, I was going to look for buy trade setups. I looked at them among Dow components, the most likely market ETF for going up next week as a bound setup, but didn't find any immediate long trade setup from Dow components. I also looked at the best performing growth stocks and value stocks. Usually, you would find a suitable long trade setup when the market is bullish when the trade direction is clear. But I didn't find any immediate long trade setup there also. That is leading me to conclude my preferred trading direction as indecisive. In such a situation, I will like to wait and see how the market is moving, how the sectors, industries and stocks are moving next week before deciding my next swing trade. As usual, whenever I see a suitable trading opportunity, I will continue to share them on my Twitter handle Sagarnandi and my traders forum sagarnandi.com. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.